you got yams, yams, you got yams, 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 you got yams. This color is literally everything. Oh my gosh. If you're in love with this color, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button and comment below. Girl. This is quite the wig transformation. I know you guys are probably like, this is a pretty cute color combination, but this wig is practically the same color as my skin complexion. So it's like I'm wearing me on my head. So I knew I had work to do. I'll have all of the products and tools listed in the description box. So definitely check that out. And one of the first things that I wanted to talk about was color banding. I'm sure this is not a new technique, but for someone like myself, if you're familiar with my first attempt at dyeing a wig, you would know that it didn't go so well. I actually ran out of dye and had to greatly alter the color of the unit. And so what this does is just create small sections using a small sized rubber band and it helps you to you know have an even color distribution as well as gauge how much dye to deposit per section so you don't run out of color for the entire unit about 10 to 13 sections is just enough it looks a little bit messy but it all works out and of course i use the adore semi-permanent hair dye and my main color is copper brown my accent color is the intense red and to enrich and deepen the color i use sienna brown and I used one full container of copper brown with about one fifth of the intense red color. And I had to eyeball the Sienna Brown because this is gonna create that super deep, rich Bordeaux color. And I just took a swatch on white paper to see how vibrant it was. And I added more copper brown and Sienna Brown. And this watch was perfect because it was the right hue, right intensity. It wasn't too bold. It didn't give me that Ronald McDonald feel. And as you guys can see, I'm using an applicator brush to apply the dye to the hair. I really want to focus this color at the base of the dark root so as to have a very seamless transition. I think that's one of the biggest inconsistencies with wigs, especially for someone like myself. And so taking my time and working the color into each section, sometimes using my hands as well as a comb to make sure each strand of hair is evenly coated is critical. And at the front, these are larger sections, but I tried to create smaller pieces so that I can really work the color into the sections to make sure it's as intense as the hair at the nape. I don't want to have lighter hair at the front so that's really important. I know this looks like a crime scene but I'm doing a pattern of starting the hair at the very top near the dark root and working it down towards the length of the hair. And once you get towards the end, once all the hair is evenly coated, you can kind of swish it all together to make sure it's uniform and just evenly coated. You guys can see I am not playing around and I let this stand on the hair for about an hour. And right after that, I went in to rinse the unit in cool water and I followed up with this moisturizing shampoo, which took to the hair very well. And I did this for about two to three rounds. And right after that, I went in with this ultra hydrating moisturizing conditioner. And I'm really going to saturate the unit with the conditioner as well as some Jamaican black castor oil, which is going to help me as I detangle. And yes, this unit does shed. That is one of the cons. And while the parting space looked good, it could have looked much better. So of course I had to go in and tweeze. I am not someone who is most comfortable with bleaching the knots. So this is a great alternative and it's really beginner friendly, which is why I continue to do it. And I flipped the wig inside out and I'm just trimming away the lace around the perimeter. This is so much easier to do. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. 
Now I'm going in with some of the Fantasia Heat Serum and I'm going to flat iron the hair at 375 to 400 degrees and I do this in small sections because I want this unit to be super sleek and it flat irons very well. It takes the heat very, very well. And I have this three inch part. I don't really do this, but I wanted this wig to lay flesh with the scalp. I wanted it to be super flat. And trust me, this is the flattest my wigs have ever laid. And I know my wig cap is like far back, but you know the ritual. You just wanna gel down your edges with the got to be gel. And then I like to follow up with the freeze spray just around the perimeter. And once it gets a little tacky and you can feel it to the touch, I'm going to position the wig exactly where I want it and use my finger to hold the middle part in place. And I'm going to situate the sides of the unit. I'm going to add some more free spray around the part and use a comb to just stick it down and I'm going to wrap my hair for about 15 to 20 minutes. Yes, there's going to be an outfit change really quick. Girl, it was a lot going on that day. And the most you should have to do is bump the very ends and this unit is really gorgeous. It's a great way to experiment. This is a super affordable bob wig under $250. Uniwigs is having a sale right now. You can get up to 20% off human hair wigs. I suggest you guys go check it out. I have all the details in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if I slay. Comment below on some bob styles you'd like to see next and I'll see you in my next video.